Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey guys, we're your hosts, M and J. And today we're talking about High Guardian Spice, Crunchyroll's new controversial show. It was announced a few years ago, but it received major backlash, and this was for a few reasons. Crunchyroll is a platform that claims to support the Japanese animation industry. It originally started out as a pirating site, but eventually became a subscription service, and they claim their subscription service was going directly to the anime industry. However, they eventually opened up their own studio known as Elation where they would create in-house productions, which was the main source of controversy. If they had commissioned a Japanese studio to make these projects, that would have been one thing, but people weren't willing to support their independent studio. Not to mention, their website has a lot of issues that were never properly addressed, including things like having sloppy translations in the subtitles, along with a lot of performance issues for the site itself. On top of the problems with Crunchyroll, the trailer they put out for High Guardian Spice wasn't doing it any favors. To be fair, people would have had the same reaction to anything Elation Studio put out since they were already against it to begin with, but the trailer wasn't even really about High Guardian Spice. It was mostly Elation Studio patting itself on the back. They came off as very arrogant, making some pretty bold claims for a new studio. This show has a lot of heart that I don't think would have come through from any other studio. I don't think anyone has seen stories quite like the ones that we're going to tell. Probably not the best way to start things off. They have no work to their name, but they're acting like they're the best thing since Sailor Moon. They also apparently had a lot of setbacks in production, so it ended up being released now in 2021. But ignoring all the shady business practices behind the scene, how did High Guardian Spice turn out on its own? Not great, unfortunately. The show comes off as pretty amateur. There's very little subtlety in the writing, both in its themes and in the script itself. It comes off as pretty juvenile despite its more mature aspects. The show even has a warning in front of it because it contains swearing and also has violence, which makes it come off as more edgy than mature, at least in our opinion. The animation isn't the worst I've seen, but they did cut corners in certain areas that have now become pretty notorious, like the PNGs they used of bread and that lamppost just because they didn't want to animate those things into it. I get that animation is a time-consuming and difficult process, but this is pushing it. It would have looked better if they just didn't put that in. The art style is definitely more western animation than anime, which is also another part of the controversy. There are more cartoonish looking animes, like Magical Doremi or Made in Abyss, but these designs are definitely more cartoony than anime. And if this show had premiered on any other streaming service, or cable like Cartoon Network, then the backlash would have been a lot less severe probably, instead of constantly being referred to as an anime. Sure, that wouldn't address the issues in the show itself, but it would have helped Crunchyroll's reputation. One issue I had with the show was the voice acting and the sound mixing. It's not great. Oftentimes the music is too loud, but also the performances can be pretty jarring. Rosemary has a very raspy voice. She sounds kind of like when a woman tries to do a young boy's voice, but annoying. No offense. And guess what? I'm not letting you go until you agree, so yeah. But the character I found to be most grating was a character called Slime Boy. Apparently he got caught sneaking an animal into his room that was known to be slimy, so that's why he's called Slime Boy. He has a tendency to speak slowly and mumble. Apparently he's shy and also smokes weed. But even if there's a reason for him to sound this way, it doesn't actually make it less annoying. But on top of all of that, his mic quality isn't the best, which isn't helping. Uh, have a look. Uh, let me know, I'll, I'll swap him out. You know, you can just like go ahead and knock on my skull if you, if you need assistance. And to top it all off, they decided to make him a bard, and his singing is something else. He poured frozen peas down your shirt. He's made up of meanness and hurt. Also, the voice acting can get pretty distracting when there's supposed to be a dramatic moment. My wrist feels like it's on fire. <gasps> <laughs> they couldn't have done another take? Seriously, I'm having flashbacks to Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
Now to be fair, I did like certain aspects of this show. I liked the colors they used, it's all very bright and vibrant, and the backgrounds for the show are very pretty. I don't know if their names are a reference to Scarborough Fair, but that would be appreciated. Although for the record, rosemary, sage, parsley, and thyme are all herbs, not spices. There's a difference, but I guess High Guardian Herb doesn't have the same ring to it. And I do think they played around with some interesting concepts, I just don't think the writing was where it needed to be. The show follows four first-year students going to High Guardian Academy, me. Rosemary, Sage, Parsley, and Time. They're trying to get through school while also dealing with their own personal troubles, like Rosemary's missing mother, or Sage struggling to learn new magic when she and her family have always used old magic, and she gets bullied for it. Unfortunately, the show doesn't do enough to set itself apart from other animes and shows that are similar to this, like Ruby or Little Witch Academia. It feels very generic because we've seen a lot of this before. The villains actually ended up being more interesting than the hero characters, although they're also a bit generic. One of the villains is Olive. She can transform between a cat girl and a cat, so she uses her cat form to gather intelligence, but over the course of the series ends up liking the girls, and she's at war with herself when she's forced to try to kill them by her superiors. The other is Mandrake, who is the sadistic villain who is kind of fun to watch. They were entertaining enough. Meanwhile, Rosemary is the clumsy, reckless adventurer who has to learn to be responsible with her sword. Time is the gloomy elf girl who has to learn to open up and not be so cold. Sage has to learn to control her magic, as it can be very dangerous. And all of this is fine, but again, we've seen it all before, and it doesn't make them feel very unique. I'd say Parsley was my personal favorite. She had to grow up fast since she's the oldest of a large family, and her parents expect her to help them raise the kids, so they're not very supportive of her ambitions. But they're able to work it out, and Parsley can continues to be kind and caring while also following her ambitions. High Guardian Academy is your typical warrior magic school. It's serviceable, but there's a few things happening at this school that really make me raise my eyebrow. Especially the magic teacher, Professor Redbud. I really don't like her. She's always trying to kill her students. Does the rest of the school know about this? Cause this is just a lawsuit waiting to happen. I get warrior school can be dangerous, but poisoning your students or having their faces get chomped on by carnivores carnivorous plants is a bit over the top. It is strange that this show is trying to go for a magical whimsy vibe, but they'll also have random cursing and violence, like Professor Redbud feeding live rats to carnivorous plants. Again, after she let that carnivorous plant chomp on a student's face. That was happening to that student, just slower, cause she's bigger than a rat. The show's art style can easily be mistaken for a kid's cartoon, but the warnings before the show plays says that it's for mature audiences only but I really don't think there's enough here that mature audiences would care for. The writing in the show is pretty lacking. There's very little subtlety. Characters will often just say how they feel and give each other a lot of validation. They also deal very heavily with progressive themes. Most of the cast is female and LGBT, but they also try to have real world allegories that might not really work given the context of this show's universe. Transformation magic seems pretty common. They even use it in the magic classes. And there's one point where the girls transform transform into mermaids, but Rosemary and Snapdragon are surprised to hear about magic potions that can let you change your gender. Just doesn't seem all that surprising. But there were some parts that made me feel like they were playing into stereotypes. For example, there's one scene where Sage claims that girls have a deeper connection in their friendships than men do. You wouldn't get this. You're a guy. But Rosemary and I, we've been best friends for pretty much ever. <laughs> I understand friendship. Guy friendship is different. It isn't the same. Guys don't talk about their feelings. Rose and I are girls. You and Amaryllis are a different story. In any case, guys just don't understand that the bond between girls is just deeper. Not only can this be insulting to guys for obvious reasons, but it also kind of comes off like she's saying women are more emotional. It's all just really stereotypical. Girls talk about their feelings and boys don't and boys can't make deeper connections the way girls can. It was just weird. They were pretty proud of the fact that they had 100% women working in the writing staff and made a lot of bold claims about the representation on this show, but then you get scenes like this. Later, Sage does apologize, saying that she understands that he cares about his 
friends, but she never actually recants her statements, so the whole thing just rubs me the wrong way. Overall, High Guardian Spice is pretty mediocre. The plot, the writing, characters, it's all pretty underwhelming, and doesn't do enough to set itself apart from other shows, and I have to say I do think Crunchyroll's resources could have been put to better use. But that's our opinion. What do you guys think? We'd love to hear from you, so leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Before we go, we want to give a shout out to our members, Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Adam K, Shiny York Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, Hunter Rose, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Sandy Martin, Verdant Range, Butcher7 Actual, Dash Hound, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Eric Griffin, Phantom of the Night, Phil C, Bandito Bane, and Taylor Ramirez. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a lot too. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.